how's it going everyone? It's been a pretty slow week as far as gaming news is concerned, so we're just gonna get things started with Dead Island. Dead Island is getting a definitive collection that will be launching on May the 31st. You'll receive Dead Island, Dead Island Riptide, and all the DLC for $39.99. Or you can purchase the game separately for $19.99 apiece. Both games are done using their latest next-gen engine, so you can expect a ton of graphical and performance improvements. Rage quitters are seeing a huge reduction in league points in Street Fighter V. So far, they're only targeting the worst offenders, so if you occasionally disconnect, quote unquote, you should be okay. They're really focusing more on players that have an 80 to 90% disconnect rate. Blizzard spoke out about Overwatch. You can look for an open beta to take place on May the 5th through the 9th, with a two-day head start period for those who have pre-ordered the game. And as far as release dates are concerned, you'll be able to pick it up May 24th. There's still no official word on when The Witcher 3's second expansion, Blood and Wine, will be releasing, but according to some Polish sources, we may see it as early as April 26th. Fable Legends has officially been cancelled, and Lionhead Studios will be shutting down. This is extremely disheartening for me because that's actually where I got my start on YouTube was doing guides for Fable 2, so it's really crazy to think that we may never see another one again. They also closed down Press Play Studios and halted the development of Project Knoxville. Sniper Elite 4 released a teaser trailer and announced that it'd be coming out this year for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Warhammer in Times launched their second pack of free DLC. It included a new map called The Town and a new last day in game mode where you'll have to fight hordes of enemies. The longer you live, the harder it becomes, resulting in a ton of new rewards. The Xbox One version of Ark Survival Evolved received a new patch. The update is said to offer a performance increase of approximately 20% and introduces tameable giant beavers and the terror bird. Star Wars Battlefront launched their March update. It added a new survival mission called Rebel Depot and a new map called Survivors of Endor. The remastered version of Day of the Tentacle will be releasing in all regions on March the 22nd. The remastered version of Valkyrie Chronicles will be launching in Europe and North America on May 17th. Total War Warhammer has been delayed from April the 28th to May 24th. They also revealed the system requirements, which you can see here. You may want to pause it if you want to read through these. The Thieves Guild DLC pack launched for the PC version of Elder Scrolls Online this week. The Xbox One version will be released on March 22nd, with the PlayStation 4 version coming out the day after. The DLC involves story content, criminal activities, a new 12-player trial, a new skill line, exclusive rewards and items, and more. Stories The Path of Destiny has received a release date. It'll be coming out on the PlayStation 4 and PC on April the 12th. The development team behind Battle Chasers Night War have confirmed a new partnership with Nordic Games, which will benefit Battle Chasers Night War quite a bit. All the stretch goals that were out of reach, including additional content, cutscenes, and full voice acting can now be achieved thanks to a budget increase. The Division sold more copies in its first 24 hours than any game in Ubisoft's history. It also set a new digital full game sales record across the Xbox One, PC, and PlayStation 4. Dead Island 2 was originally revealed a few years ago during E3, and we're happy to report that it's still very much alive. It's currently in development for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, but that's really all we know right now. Ashes of the Singularity will be releasing this month on March 31st. According to developers, the complete version will contain all of the intended features, including massive amounts of units that you can easily organize into armies, the world's first multi-core real-time AI, a story-driven non-linear campaign, a wealth of multiplayer features, and more. There's a new Fallout 4 mod that will allow you to craft a drug using the chemistry crafting station called the Perk Reset Chem. And what this is going to do is reset all of your perks, including your special, and refund all of those perk points, including the ones that you get from your bobblehead special stats and your special. If you're interested in downloading or learning more, then check out the link in the description. XCOM 2 received its first major patch. It includes fixes for the game's performance, balance, gameplay, systems, graphics, and multiplayer. This thing is massive. There's a new zip mode gameplay option, Steam controller configuration, 
camera rotation for multiplier, and so much more. You're going to want to check out the full notes in the link below because it would take me so long to read through everything that they fixed. And lastly, Rise of the Tomb Raider added a new DirectX 12 and VXAO patch. We did all kinds of tests, so I'll make sure to link you to that if you're interested in seeing what we used to test it and what our results were. Some of them were surprising, so you may want to check it out. And that's going to sum up this week's worth of news. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy your weekend.